So welcome again everybody. Sorry for that that happened. Uh, we are going to take that about the selective laser centering, 3D printing, how it works, the advantage, disadvantage, application, the challenges. And this is how is the 3D printer SLS that we have in our lab. 3D printing or had different name additive manufacturing is the process of making three dimensional solid object from a digital file. So we have to create first virtual design of the object using uh, CAD or computer aided design. Then we have to take that design, convert it to STL file needed to be processed by a soft, another software. It's called the slicer that will convert your dosage form into slices, thin layers. Then it will produce G code file. This this G code file we can take it and to the 3D printer. Then we can start work and print. We are going to pass the history so we can talk about our techniques. Uh, so we have so many different 3D printing techniques, but not all of them are good or can be applicable for, to the pharmaceuticals. So we have mainly four techniques that can be used in, for the pharmaceuticals. The first of all, like the fuse, the deposition modeling, stereolithography, selective laser centering, and binder jetting. So we can just go uh, through the uh, three other techniques. You can just familiar, be familiar with these techniques. Then we can go and discuss SLS or selective laser centering in details. The first one is the fused deposition modeling that you will get your drug and polymer in the, in the form of filament first. Then these filaments will come through these rulers. They will be heat to become completely melted. Then it will inject from that nozzle on the scaffold, so it will start printing our dosage form. So you have to convert your drug and the polymer first into filament, then you can start printing this one. Second technique is the stereolithography that you have to get first photopolymer resin. This photopolymer polymer resin, we are going to use the laser source to melt that resin so we can start printing our dosage form. The third technique, which was already has one of the FDA approved product in the market now, which, which is called binder jetting. You are going to use the powder uh, blend that has all your drug and excipients. You will spread as one layer. Then from this one layer, the binder solution will get injected onto the, uh, according to the design on the STL file, it will start uh, buying the particles of the powder to get the shape of the tablet. After completing that layer, this ruler will spread one more layer of powder, then again inject the binder solution so it will start to build layer by layer uh, till getting the final thickness of the dosage form. So mainly we are going to discuss the selective laser centering. This is one of the uh, that's evolving rapidly in the pharmaceutical manufacturing these days. Uh, it's already there from 1980, but it wasn't uh, like it, it was just for printing metal, printing everything else away from the pharmaceutical application. So it has just come into the pharmaceutical applications like the, the past 15 years. So this technique is uh, like have many different advantage over the other uh, 3D printing for pharmaceuticals. Like it's solvent free. We are not going to use any solvents like the inkjet one. So you can use it for the or water and organic solvent sensitive drug molecules. Second advantage is relatively high speed. It's just by within one hour you will get your tablets ready. Uh, like compared for the other techniques, it is a highly fast one. No requirement of filament form of raw material, polymerized uh, liquid binder, or both processing. So you can use your drug binder, uh, sorry, your drug uh, blend directly without need to convert it to filament first, without uh, using liquid binder, without any both processing that you have to use 
to clarify or clean your tablet. It's already, you can just use it directly after you prepared it because no post processing for this technique. So print list will be immediately available. Uh, if you have this small SLS printer in your uh, lab or on your hospital, uh, hospital pharmacy, you can just create the tablets directly for the patients for personalized medicine that you have like, we know that the problem of like one tablet fits all, that is a conventional tablet, this will not work properly, especially if you have a uh, narotherapeutic index drug, if you have pediatrics, so you have to individualize your dosage form to this patient and according to his age, his medical case. So this printer is like small in size that you can get it in your the hospital pharmacy or you can get it in the lab. So it's like easy to work, easy to create your folders, easy to print your tablets. You can take it directly because there is no post processing for this one. So the last advantage is that you can print multiple drugs within different release and mechanical characteristics in one tablet. So like you can include like up to five tablets, five drugs in one tablet. Like one tablet will be, one part is immediate release, one part is uh, modified release. You can include many tablets, uh, so many drugs in one tablet. So, SLS forms a 3D object by laser energy to selectively heated powder particles which, re which results in fusion. I will show now uh, one video showing the three parts of the SLS system, you have three components parts, spreading platform, powder bed, and laser system. So we have powder, we have spreading ruler, we have laser system that you, you are going to create your, uh, your uh, tablet. So as you see now, the laser is taking the shape that you, this shape is already we created on the computer, like the number of tablets, the size of tablet, this is three millimeter tablets. Then it will start to get printing, spread one layer of powder, then taking the shape of the circles, then the laser are going to uh, print the tablets, make it like fuse this drug uh, particles, make it above the melting point of the, all the components we used. Yes, after completing the layer, the ruler will spread one more layer. Then again, the laser will start melting this layer to make one more layer. Then again and again, till getting all your uh, tablet layers ready. So you can just open the uh, printer let it cool down, then you can start taking out your tablet. Dr. Iman, are you with Yes. طيب الشير بتاع البرزنتيشن شير دكتور احمد الشير بتاع البرزنتيشن البرزنتيشن من الظهر يا دكتور اه هو كان في فيديو المفروض شغال ده المفروض شفتوه ولا عيد تاني؟ اه 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 كان شغال وشفناه وفجأة البرزنتيشن فاصل. اه رجعت كده تمام يا دكتور تمام تمام اوكي سو از يو سي هير ذيس از ذا فاينل تابلت سو وين وي توك ات اوت فروم ذا برينتر لايك ذيس از وي ديزاين Three uh, millimeter diameter, uh, three millimeter thickness tablet in a ten millimeter uh, diameter uh, tablet. 
This we, in these tablets, we use our drug that was clindamycin palmitate. We have to use a polymer that can be melted by the heat and later. You have to use expedients that can help in the, your uh, drug flow ability. Then you have to use a color. This color should be FDA approved, like uh, any color that is available and can be used. So this is the components of the mixture that you have to include in your uh, drug blend to be used in the SLS. You have to get active ingredient, you have to get a polymer, you have to get expedients in case of your flowability is not good, you have to get a color. So this is how is the flow chart of the SLS working. You have to design first, then you have to start debossing the powder layer on the building platform. This is the drug and the, all the excipients. Then a curious powder layer, you have to spread it layer by layer. Then in the other part, you will see the centering. Centering means that the laser is going to melt the powder in a specific shape to make it completely uh, uh, dosage form. In that case, we have critical process parameters that can affect your dosage form, like the preheating of the powder, what is the temperature you are going to use, the laser power, the spot diameter, the layer thickness that you already created in your uh, slicing program, the scanning speed, as uh, like every time you are going to decrease the laser speed, that will give more longer time for the laser to be on the drug in contact with the drug particle. That means will give more hard uh, tablets. If you are going to use high speed laser, so that means that the laser will get in contact this with the uh, powder, then it will give like friable tablets. The distance itself from the how distance is between the laser uh, hatch, then the, uh, the powder layer also affects. So this is called the critical process parameter. How can we monitor all the in process monitoring? We can use camera, we can use photodiode IR thermal, uh, thermal camera. We can use hyperspectral opt uh, or optical tomography. After centering, getting one layer completely centered, then this uh, left side will go a little down by one layer thickness. The ruler will come, spread one more layer in the same thickness, then the laser comes to center, then your 3D object will be completely fabricated. This is how the process flow chart of the selective laser centering works. So here, like in the fishbone diagram, it will give you all the critical quality attributes of the printed dosage form, how is the, the, the drug properties, how is the excipient properties are affecting the final dosage form, how is your formulation factors are affecting process parameters, powder mixture, melt properties, laser factors, all of these are in combination are going to affect your final dosage form. You have to optimize your uh, parameters like you have to do, uh, like maybe you can do box painting design, any design that you have multiple factors, you have to study these factors, change the temperature, change in laser speed, change in the polymer, change in the experience, then you will get some trials, you are going to blend these trials, you are going to do characterization, then you have to optimize your formulation according to the results you get from all of these parameters. The polymer, uh, like the, the most important factor here, if you get uh, exhibients with the similar melting point as your drug, and all of the exhibients you are using has the same melting range, that means they will get melt together at the same temperature, they are going to be completely homogeneous, then there is no problem in that one. But if you use, like for example, your drug is melting at 140, the other polymer is, is at 200 or 250, that means they will not melt by the same temperature, that means one will be completely melted, the other one will not melt completely, then there will be is, uh, segregation in your drug uh, 
blend uh, vector, so it will not give you a final good formulation. So you can create like design like this, study the speed, study the excipient concentration you are using, study uh, like the laser, uh, the temperature of that one. You can create your own design, run so many uh, formulation according to the design and get your data into the box bank and design software like the GMD or MATLAB or whatever the uh, uh, software you are using for your optimization then you will get one only optimized formula this can be used directly by your patient. So when we run like the solution of our 15 prepare formulation, they all are almost like like the immediate release normal formulation. There is no uh, deviations. You will get like if you check here, like if you uh, included more uh, excedents like the MCC or lactose, uh, decrease the speed, uh, decrease the polymer percent you are using, increase the temperature. That will give you a more friable tablet or more uh, the integration time will be less, then your dissolution profile will be high, then you might get the 100% within 30 minutes. If you use like high, uh, low speed, uh, low laser speed, uh, high polymer concentration, that will give you a high integration time formulation, that means the release or the release profile will be less. So when we, uh, we run the chemical imaging of the 15 formulation, you will get like this, uh, the drug is completely distributed, you will not get uh, any segregation, like you will not get different colors, that means your formulation is completely one phase, there is no difference, like uh, there is no segregation in the uh, drug polymer mixture, so you will get like homogeneous and spread uh, of your drug. This is how we, uh, when we run the scanning electron microscopy, this is the difference between when, uh, on the left, when you are using the low speed, low laser speed scanning, the right one is like when you use high speed. High speed will not melt the drug particles completely. You will can see, you can see here how it looks like when you use high and low speed. This is when we run the uh, surface tomography. This is also, you can see here, when we run at low laser speed, uh, so low laser speed and high laser speed. The porosity of the tablets are completely different. The melting uh, structure of the uh, drug polymer mixture is different. So one of the challenges we are facing in the SLS you have to fill your uh, printer with powder. That makes uh, like it's 100, 120 gram of drug powder mixture. If you just run this like 30, 40 tablets from this 120 gram, what, what, we, what will you do with the uh, unprinted raw material that is already uh, exposed to heat, exposed to laser? Is it possible to recycle this powder again or it's not possible? So this is one of the major challenges we are studying now in the SLS. If you can use this unprinted raw material after the printing or not. It's not feasible to reuse certain materials such as polymers owing to adverse impact on their quality and purity. Like uh, the byproducts of SLS process may adversely impact the chemical quality of powders, making them unsuitable for further use. Like since it's already exposed to heat, exposed to laser, so you can't decide like this powder is completely 100% like the fresh powder or not. So you can't recycle this one again or it might affect your drug uh, formulation characteristics. Mostly like sometimes some particles, it will get fused from the laser, but it will not get attached to each other. Then the particle size distribution will be different. 
uh, it will affect the mechanical properties of the material. It will get completely impact on the quality attributes of the uh, powder. So what will the people do? They are going to take 30% only from this recycled or the unprinted raw material and mix it with 70% fresh powder so they can avoid this recycling, recycling problems. We are going to study in detail now in our next project if we, how can we optimize the use of this recycling, uh, recycled powder in the SMS. So you can see here, here in the, if, when we run the NIR chemical imaging or the formulations, how the tablets are different from the initial and recycled. You will see here the distribution of the drug is, is, it becomes a little different from the initial one to the, if you recycle the powder for only one cycle, if you recycle again for a second cycle, then you will start to get your drug distribution is like it's not completely like the first time. So the effects of the uh, 3D printed formulation is completely different from the compressed tablet defects. We used to study in our pharmaceutics courses how is the compressed tablets like capping uh, all of these issues. This one it has different completely uh, uh, defects than the compressed tablet. It has bending. So when it's tripled on a part size caused by vibration in the XY plane during the printing. Since we have this is 3D uh, module that has XYZ axis, if there is little vibration in this XY plane during the printing, then it will get little ripples on this one. There is leaning. If you get off axis parts caused by drift in the XY plane during printing, you have rubbing, which is bar distortion caused by thermal expansion or contraction. Sometimes if, when applying heat, some parts will get expanded, some parts will get contracted. That means it will get trapped. There is changing that wipes of filaments caused by filament elongation during extruders of phase. If you use the filament deposition modeling, you will get this one. Uh, collapse, that is the loss of porosity caused by seeing layers or excessive mass energy input. Residuals, which is the unbound bar uh, powder or uncrossed monomer caused by incomplete printing. If the layer, the final layer or any layer in between that not completely uh, printed well, then you will get like fine particles residual on your tablet and it's like it will get not completely good. So in conclusion, our dosage form can be printed using SLS printer with unique characteristics. It can be taken directly. You can personalize your drug according to your patient condition, your patient age. You can print it your formulation freshly. You can print multiple drugs in one. You can develop from your design one master formula that you can print on a wide range of drugs. If they have the same characteristics, then you can just take out one drug, add one more drug with the same uh, formulation. Then no need to create model or to study each drug separately. If you optimize for one drug, then you get another drug with the same characteristics. You can just use your model directly. Stability testing, online monitoring, and GMP convalient. We didn't have any issues with the stability since we are not using any solvents. We are not using any humidity in the system. And since our laser speed, uh, sorry, in laser, in our laser power is only 2.2 watts, so this is not like affecting uh, the, the drug, it will not destroy our drug, so we can use it for the, thermos, uh, for the uh, stable, uh, less stable drugs. The only issue we can have if you have thermosensitive drugs that can be used, uh, if, like if you are going to use heat, then you have to be careful from your drug melting point. If it is thermosensitive, then you can't use this technique for. This is our lab team. I have to acknowledge them 
uh, for their supporting my research uh, and everything here in the lab. And thank you. Dr. Iman. والدومين اللي حضرتك بتمارسي فيه الساينس دلوقتي من الدومينز الهايلي انترستنج اللي هو ال 3D برينتنج واعتقد ان هو هيكون ان شاء الله في خلال الفترات الزمنيه المقبله الحقبه الزمنيه المقبله هيكون هو الليدنج ريسيرش افتر نانو تكنولوجي اخذت مننا حقبه كبيره جدا في الابحاث آه الفترة الجاية إن شاء الله هيكون الـ 3D printing أعتقد هو الـ will lead research in uh, pharmaceutical technology آه طبعا آه دينامو هذه الدورات التدريبية والدورات العلمية آه زميلتنا الدكتورة هبة أحمد سيد أبو طالب الأستاذ المشارك بكلية الصيدلة آه جامعة النهضة آه ورئيس قسم ألكسندر فليمنج للطب والصيدلة طبعا ما اقدرش اوفيها حقها من الشكر على تجهيز هذه المحاضرات والاتصال بالمشاركين من المحاضرين المتميزين طبعا مرورا بمشاركتها المتميزه في تحضير العدد بتاع المجله الشهريه مجله اكاديميه المعرفه اللي احنا بنتشرف ان احنا بننتمي اليها بالاضافه الى انتماءاتنا الأكاديمية المختلفة ألف شكر للدكتورة هبة أبو طالب طبعا إن هي بتكون سبب في معرفتنا بالزملاء دكتورة إيمان وغيرها من الزملاء ألف شكر لحضرتك ويا ريت يعني إذا حاضر معانا دكتور سمير الجبوري يا ريت نسمع كلمة من حضرتك يا دكتور سمير قبل ما نفتح باب الأسئلة هل دكتور سمير معانا؟ طيب واضح ان دكتور سمير اعتقد ان هو في جلسه اخرى فاحنا هنفتح باب الاسئله اتفضلوا دكاتره اذا كان في اسئله للدكتوره ايمان طيب ممكن حضراتكم اذا كان في اسئله نكتبها على الشاتنج بحيث نمنع الصوت الزياده اذا كان في اسئله احنا ممكن نكتب الاسئله على الشاتنج شكرا لحضرتك يا دكتورة إيمان وشكرا لحضرتك يا دكتور أحمد عايزين نرحب بدكتور فهد الشريف موجود معانا برضو من أمريكا زي حضرتك يا دكتور فهد أهلا بيك يا دكتور فهد طيب دكتور فهد لو موجود أنا هفتح ال... هفتح له المايك أنا بحاول بس بقدر الإمكان أقلل ال... الأصوات بتاعة ال... الزملاء لو دكتور فهد موجود يا دكتورة قصادك ممكن حضرتك تفتح له المايك دكتور فهد اهو اتفضل يا دكتور فهد اتفضل يا دكتور السلام عليكم ورحمه الله ازيك يا دكتور ازيك يا دكتور ازيك يا دكتور فهد عامل ايه؟ والله يا دكتور ايه بقى اول ما عليك انا فتحت على طول يعني انا انا ام سو اكشلي ام سوبر سوبر اكسايتد تو جوين يو بصراحه ربنا يجازيكم خير دكتور فهد انت زميل عزيز علينا وكنت سابقا معانا هنا احد المحاضرين المتميزين يعني ربنا يبارك في سعادتك والدكتور ايمان ربنا ينفع بينا وبيا اللهم امين يا رب. وانا شاكر على هذه يا ريت لو تبعتوا لنا الكيديول او حاجه بحيث ان احنا نكون منظمين قبلها يا ريت يا دكتور هبه يبقى كتير علينا والله. حاضر حاضر من بدري ان شاء الله دكتور فهد بنكون منظمين وبعدين لحضرتك ان شاء الله عن طريق التواصل مع دكتور هبه ونبعت حضرتك اللينك بتاع اللينك بتاعنا على المنتدى حضرتك تنضم لنا للمنتدى ان شاء الله دكتور فهد. ربنا يبارك في حضرتك. اي 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 هاف جاست ا سمبل كويشن لدكتور ايمان ربنا يبارك فيها اف شي از ستيل افيلابل. اكيد اتفضل ربنا يبارك في 
Las parejas alteran los sulfatos con nosotros. Ah, man. دكتور فهد الصوت بتاع حضرتك راح فيها والصوت ما سمعناش حاجة. اوكي امم طب كده كويس؟ اه كده كويس. اه انا اسف جدا في 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 او ام اسكينج اف اف ات كود بي ام اسكينج ابوت ذا 3D برينتنج اف ات كود بي كوست افكتيف اور لايك از ات ستيل لايك فيري اكسبنسيف تكنيك اند وي ار نوت ايبل تو هاف a large scale um, development of this technique. Uh, and I know that there is, I think, we have done the FDA has approval of two or three medications, 3D printing. But I don't know if it's a large scale or a small scale. But maybe if Dr. Ayman has the background, it would be amazing. God bless you, dear friend. There are definitely techniques like fuse modeling, inkjet modeling. دول ممكن نستخدمهم على لارج سكيل بس برضه مش هتبقى كوست افكتيف هي ستيل هاي كوست بس كان بي اون لارج سكيل الاس ال اس ستيل ناو وي ديدنت تراي اون لارج سكيل بيكوز يو نو لايك وي لايك از يو سي وي ار جوينج تو يوز هاي لارج اماونت اوف باودر وي ستيل هاف بروبلم ان ذا ريسايكلينج سو فور يوزنج اون لارج سكيل We 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 have to optimize like our uh, SLS printers. I know that the people are trying to decrease the amount of powder using in each run. In that case, if you just use the, like few grams every time to print your tablet, that will be awesome. That means you can use it on large scale. The cost will not be very high. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Iman. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, because this is actually one of my concerns about the uh, 3D printing because it's still under improving. And I think. Yeah, it's still high cost still now, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gazak Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. Let's continue with Dr. Fahda, Dr. Iman, that we have another problem. If you can solve this, we will solve a, a huge problem in 3D printing price. Which is the price of the uh, of the uh, exhibients? If you can use exhibients of uh, uh, of low price or exhibients uh, of normal scale, not high, uh, not highly precise uh, exhibients, I think that we can reduce the price of uh, 3D printing uh, overall process. I'm right. Yes, this is, yeah, this is the, from the advantage of the SLS because you are just going to use the normal polymers that you can yeah. use the CMT. Yeah. Yes, you can yes. use the body of this is all our cheap expedient. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's not so expensive for centering. Yes. That's because you are like for now for now for now three D printing is not is not a, a, a cheap effective. So it's not it's not cost effective. So I think so that will be limited only for uh, highly uh, uh, priced uh, 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 treatment or uh, a precise medicine. Yeah, it will be like it will be yes. very good for the narrow therapeutic end of the drug if you, because, like you know, you can personalize this one for each patient. It will still be good for them. If you are ju just having like the normal dosage, uh, sorry, normal drugs like analgesic everything, you can do it by the compress compression techniques. No need to do yes. it by the uh, really printing. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Iman. Thank you, Dr. Fahd, for your question. Thank you. Any other questions about this case, about this issue, about presentation? Any questions for future perspectives for 3D printing? طيب إذا ما كانش في أسئلة فهيكون طبعا إحنا شاكرين جدا لدكتورة إيمان تواجدها معانا في هذا اليوم وإن شاء الله توعدنا بمحاضرة أخرى بإذن الله وأتمنى دكتورة إيمان بإذن الله توعدينا بمحاضرة أخرى بإذن الله أنا أنا عارف إن إحنا أنا عارف إن إحنا طلبتنا كتير بس والله ده من عشمنا يعني. احنا وعدنا كلنا في الوقت بس مش اكتر. كلنا والله يا دكتوره. 
احنا قعدنا ست شهور عشان نتفق على المحاضره دي بقيت انا متفق على خلاص ايه المشكله كمان ست شهور احنا احنا عندنا صبر كبير عندنا ست شهور كمان ايه المشكله؟ المحاضره دي ديسمبر الجاي بقى <تصفيق> طيب ماشي هيكون شادر حلو يا دكتور <تصفيق> ان شاء الله باذن الله انا هحاول اجيب برضه يعني فكره كويسه كده بروجكت جديد مثلا كنت بدانا شغل في حاجه حققنا فيها كده جبنا عملنا فيها انجاز وان شاء الله اعمل له شير مع الناس يعني ميرسي ميرسي يا دكتوره ايمان وشكرا للدكتوره هبه مره ثانيه وشكرا لصدى الحضور والف شكر لحضراتكم ساعه صبركم وتحملنا في الوقت الف شكر لحضرتك يا دكتور الف شكر يا فندم الف شكر يا فندم شكرا اتفضلي دكتوره هبه شكرا يا دكتورة إيمان على المحاضرة القيمة وإن شاء الله زي ما وعدتنا هنعمل محاضرة تانية في البروجكت الجديد إن شاء الله مرسي خالص لتلبية الدعوة وشكرا لكل الحاضرين ومرسي خالص لدكتور فهد على تشريفه لينا النهاردة. ربنا يبارك في حضرتك يا دكتورة بشاك جدا لحضرتك شكرا. العفو يا دكتورة هيرو وأسفا كنت يعني طولت على ما جهزت المحاضرة بس يعني الحمد لله طلعت أخيرا. <تصفيق> لا طبعا دي محاضرة قيمة كتر خيرك. شكرا واحنا طبعا بنخدم هدفنا خدمه اثراء المعرفه ده شعار منظمه الصداقه العالميه واكاديميه اثراء المعرفه